All righty. Welcome, everybody. Uh, it is, uh, what is today? Today is Tuesday, April 6th, 2021. Welcome to our, uh, the, the next audio community plugin here at Avid. We have a great one for you today. Hi, everybody. My name is Greg Chin, uh, audio evangelist for Avid. Uh, for those of you who have been joining us over the last, uh, let's see, almost a year now uh, doing these, welcome back wherever in the world you might be. Uh, welcome. Hope everyone's staying safe. We've got a great one for you today. Uh, we've got a really special guest, one of our own, Mr. Uh, Simon Sherborne, based in the UK, is going to be walking us through uh, music creation. Apparently, Pro Tools can make beats. Who knew? Well, we we all know, uh, but you know, oddly enough, a lot of people still still don't 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 quite know that. So Simon is going to be showing off some really great workflow, his own his own uh, brand of music. Uh, using MPC Beats and Reason Plus in Pro Tools, which is going to be really amazing. I got a sneak peek of what he's working on, and uh, I cannot wait for him to share that with you guys. But before we do, again, welcome to everyone, um, wherever you might be. I wanted to just get some uh, housekeeping out of the way um, so that uh, all of you can get the best out of, uh, out of this session. So let's just do that really quickly. Uh, let's see here. So, uh, getting the most out of the webinar, we want to make sure that when Simon is on screen, you can, you, you know, he's got your full attention. You can actually see him. Uh, you might notice if you're here registered, uh, if you pre-registered for, for the, for the session, uh, you're going to be here in our, uh, our, our, our zoom our corporate, well, you know, zoom, uh, application uh, to make sure that you you know get the best out of that you can actually click on the gallery view you can actually just look at Simon you know directly he's going to be doing some screen share as well um, now at, towards the end when we have the Q&A you might want to go into actual gallery view so you can see either at least several of us myself Robert Miller Dave Tyler will all be here helping helping Simon answer some questions so at that point you might want to go into gallery view but uh, while Simon is on for his bit you might want to go into speaker view so you can just click on the top right hand corner and um, you know, select what you need to uh, for the for the for the right moment. Um, now, if you're here in Zoom as well, you might notice that you might see a, a bunch of uh, black squares or maybe some some still photos of of uh, some uh, different attendees that are here in the room. We've got quite a quite a good number, so you might want to go ahead and hide those so that it doesn't take up the real estate of your screen. To do that, you can just click on the three little dots on the uh, on the right of your mute button and select hide non-video participants. That way all those uh, blocks, those those little screens will go away and give you some real estate back, okay? Now, um, we wanna say, well, again, welcome everyone. If you've pre-registered, pre again, you're here in Zoom, but that doesn't mean that, uh, you know, that's, that's all we have. We are actually broadcasting live to all of our social media across many different platforms. So we've got our Facebook groups, so our Avid Facebook group, our Pro Tools Facebook groups, wanna say hi to everybody there. Uh, we've got LinkedIn. Uh, YouTube and Twitter all live. So wherever you might be in the world, uh, whatever platform, hello, we actually got moderators, some of our amazing solution specialist team uh, around the world are monitoring uh, those those platforms as well. So as you have questions, please do feel free to get them in. Uh, you know, I'm sure whoever's monitoring those those platforms are saying hello and giving you some information as well. I want to say thank you to the team for doing that. Um, we do have an official Q&A section. Uh, that we'll be uh, doing. So if you're here in the Zoom, you can actually just click the Q&A icon in the menu bar, type your question, be as detailed as you can. Uh, we will be answering some of those while Simon is doing his thing, uh, so as to not bother him, but we'll also save some of those up and it, you know, we'll, we'll ask Simon some of those questions at the end. So the last 15 minutes or so, we'll be able to have some Q&A. Now, same thing applies if you were uh, on any of the other social media platforms, you can ask, uh, ask your questions there as well. Uh, they'll either be answered directly right there, and, right then and there by by our moderators there, or we'll you know we'll try and get some of those over into the main uh, into the main uh, session so that uh, they can be asked and that everybody can kind of benefit from that as well. We'll, we'll get to as many as we possibly can, but we want to make sure that we give Simon all the time that he needs to uh, to do his thing. So uh, our featured presenter today, one of my Sorry. favorite people. Oh. Thank you, Siri. Don't need to hear from you right now. Uh, Mr. Simon Sherborne, based in the UK, an amazing producer. Uh, he's he's uh, one of our, our, our premier audio uh, solution specialists. He's a, a, a great writer for Sound and Sound and many other, many other uh, publications and blogs and uh, a, a great music producer in his own right. And uh, also a reason specialist. That's one of the first things I knew about uh, uh, Simon. And uh, whenever I have reason questions, he's one of the first people I go to. So with that, I will shut up and turn it over to you. Simon, thank you, welcome. And what do you have for us today? 
Thank you so much, Greg. Uh, Greg is uh, hiding his light a little there. I know he's a big reason expert as well. But um, yeah, thank you so much. I am so excited today to talk to you about a couple of really legendary music production tools um, and how they integrate inside Reason. Um, and in particular, I want to show you how I use them um, and just really play with some of the features and have a bit of fun and hopefully uh, show some uh, stuff that might be inspirational um, with the, that you can get out of these tools. Um, so I know um, Greg, I think already mentioned that we're teaming up with the guys at Reason Studios so that we, um, uh, they're going to offer everybody a 90 day uh, free trial, uh, not really a free trial, but a first three months free of their Reason Plus service. So definitely go and get that. Uh, you'll love that. And then if you love it, you can carry on um, and sign up after that. And then the other thing is MPC Beats, which is the software version of the MPC, which we're going to be playing with. And that is free to download and use uh, up to eight tracks per project. Um, and so, you know, both of these tools, uh, I'm sure that many of you watching have used both of them. Um, but you may not have used MPC Beats, which is, um, you know, the kind of software back end of the MPC. And you may not have seen Reason in Pro Tools. Um, so I'm excited to show you how that works. Uh, Pro Tools for me is the kind of center of everything that I'm doing here. It's like my mixer and my monitor station and where I record everything. And I've got, you know, some hardware and um, some virtual instruments. So to get these other workflows into Pro Tools, things like beat chopping and um, drum machines and step sequencing, you know, it's really quite inspiring to, uh, different new ways to work. So what I'm going to do is we're going to start with the MPC. So MPC from Akai, you know, legendary piece of kit. Most of you probably know it as a standalone piece of hardware. I am going to flip my camera so you can see I'm actually spoiled today because thanks to the Akai guys in the UK, I've got an MPC X here that I can uh, play with, uh, but I'm going to be showing you the software engine. So what I normally do with the MPC um, and uh, some of the other hardware workstations that I like to use, I type, like to start projects away from the computer and obviously at the kitchen table or uh, you know outside and come up with some ideas. And then when there's something that I've got that I want to work with, I'll move that into Pro Tools um, and capture those ideas and then just basically develop them into something that's more like a finished arrangement. And I'm going to show you exactly how I do that. So one of the nice things about having the Harbour MPC is that in my projects that I save on here, I can Im immediately open in Pro Tools. All I have to do is connect up the hardware to my computer via USB, and those projects will be visible. Um, if you're not using an MPC hardware station, if you're using MPC Beats on its own, you can just work directly in Pro Tools and you can use any MIDI controllers you've got to hand. So I'm going to stop talking so much about it and show you now. So let me share my screen. OK, so hopefully what you'll be seeing now is, uh, apart from the back of my head, you'll also be seeing an empty Pro Tools session. Um, so normally when I start this process, I would use some kind of a template. Uh, or a track preset, which is going to bring in everything into Pro Tools and let me start working straight away. Today, I'm going to start and build it bit by bit so you can see how this works. OK, so first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add an instrument track in Pro Tools by option double clicking. And let's add MPC. So I'm just going to start typing MPC Beats. Now you'll see in here that MPC Beats comes up a couple of times. This is the actual uh, plugin itself. And this is my track preset that I use. So normally I would just drag that in and you'll see why in a moment when I show you the rest of my workflow. Um, I didn't actually choose MPC Beats there, but let's do it. So essentially the, the software engine that runs inside the standalone MP MPCs runs as a plugin as well. And it does absolutely everything that the hardware versions do. Um, MPC Beats does everything normal MPC does, except for the eight tracks um, kind of ceiling on there. All right, what you can see now is uh, an empty MPC, MPC project inside Pro Tools. So this is the MPC plugin. 
which uh, as you can see has a nice color match to the new dark mode in Pro Tools. Um, and we'll sh I'll show you a little bit more about what's going on in here, but let's open a project. So from the file browser down here, I can see this. Now this is the SD card that's in my MPC that's mounted on the desktop and inside projects, that's all the projects I've been working on. Uh, Beats Community is the project. And with any luck, you should be able to hear some sounds. So basically what you're looking at here is the MPC uh, main view, um, which is showing me one track from one sequence. So inside MPC, I have multiple sequences and these are basically scenes and, or snapshots or song parts. So I've stored a few different song parts and then within that, there's a number of different tracks. So I can control them from the mouse or I could control them from my MPC hardware. So I can actually flip through my tracks from here. Or if I'm using MPC beats without hardware, I can map any of those things onto um, uh, whatever MIDI controller I've got. So I can map to the pads, uh, the control knobs. I can map to my different modes and views and transport so that I can get more hands-on with my controller. Okay, so let, I'm just going to, just to show you what I've got running in here, I'm gonna to switch to a sequence where everything's kind of running because uh, I've got some tracks muted. And then, so track one, I can trigger this from my keyboard or from my MPC. Okay, um, that's a drum kit. Uh, let's roll, scroll through. I've got another track with some. I got locked up, locked up. Got some vocal samples which seemed appropriate. Up, I got locked up, locked These just up. actually happen to be on the MPC factory library. Um, got a pad. I've got a bass line. So as you can see, it's focusing the software one track at a time and whichever track is up, my MIDI keyboard is gonna play. I can also switch to the program edit view, which is gonna let me edit the sounds. So these, this is one of the internal plugins inside MPC Beats. And I can control that from here. And I've got that mapped up on the MPC as well. There you go. Um, let's get back to here. And then I've got some chops. So again, one of the classic things to do with an MPC is to record in a sample um, or a loop and then chop it up. Um, so that's what I've got going on here, which you can see if I go into the chop page. Basically, really nice trick to just chop up a sample, but not every single transient. And then you can very easily create some break beats um, or jump bass type grooves just by sequencing these shots. There we go. And um, there's that. So that's kind of the different tracks I've got in the MPC. Um, the other main view that I'm going to show you in the software is the program mixer. So if I switch to this view, you can actually see, I zoom this up smaller. These are all the tracks that I've got and each sequence has got a slightly different set of things going on. And then at the bottom here is my program mixer. So these are all the sounds that I'm using with the plugins that they're using. Um, these Air plugins, by the way, they're the same plugins that we have as part of the Pro Tools uh, standard set of plugins. Um, Okay, so let's have a look what we've got going on. So what am I going to do with this? Now I could, you know, I could work with this. I could work with the MPC live in this track. I could sequence it alongside what I want to do. Um, another way I could get this stuff into my Pro Tools project is to just pull the building blocks into my session. And if you watched um, a few weeks ago, Greg was showing some of his music workflow with Machina, which works really similar to this. Uh, this workflow kind of applies to that platform as well. Uh, and what Greg was doing was creating loops and building blocks inside Machina and then dropping them straight into tracks and protocols and building from there. Uh, and I can do that too. So let's, if I was in my main view, um, let's just switch to track one. Um, let's just do that in sequence two. 
do. Um, I can, similar to machine, I can just click little audio render button and it's just going to create a loop out of that section and let me drop it into the track if I zoom in you'll see I was really far zoomed out that's basically taken this building block dropped it in as an audio track in there and I could do the same I could also drop MIDI in as well from my sequences that's a great way of working I'm going to do something slightly different this time so I'm going to delete that track. So, so what I like to do when I'm, whether I'm working with the MPC or whether I'm working with the hardware synth is actually try and record something into Pro Tools Live um, because I just find that's a much quicker way of getting a starting arrangement that I can then work with um, and chop things up rather than trying to build things from blocks on a screen, um, which I don't tend to do very well at. Um, and it also means I can capture quite a dynamic performance. I can adjust parameters as I go. Um, and anyway, you'll see. So I could do that as a stereo mix, but I actually want to multi-track all of this out. So in Pro Tools, I'm going to capture the output of all of these channels individually. And you can see in here that they're all currently mixing out to outputs one and two. And I'm going to change that. So the MPC plugin has 32 separate outputs that I can route to anywhere in Pro Tools. And you'll, as we'll see in the Reason Rack plugin, you can do exactly the same there as well. So let's get the baseline is going to be out of 11 and 12. My vocal samples 13 and 14. And this last program is not actually being used. So I've got six elements. Um, and I need six tracks to capture them. So in Pro Tools, I'm going to create six stereo tracks. We'll call them MPC. So here we go, six tracks. Now I need to route from these buses into here. These tracks are already selected, so I can use the Pro Tools shortcut shift command option, which will essentially um, cascade any selections I do and sequentially change the settings. So if I hold that key combination down, Come into the input selector and choose plugin. You'll see my MPC Beats plugin. I'm going to choose three and four. And now these channels will all be taking their inputs from here. I'm going to input monitor those tracks. And now you can see that my drum kit is coming in here. I've got some vocal hits coming in over here. Let's switch to another sequence where there's a lot more going on. Not that much more going on. Let's try a different one. There you go. So you can see a bunch of stuff coming in on separate tracks. So all I need to do now, I'm just going to hit return to go back to the start. I'm going to throw everything into record. And I'm going to record. Um, I'm just going to record what I'm doing in MPC. One feature in Pro Tools that I do use a lot um, is the fact that I can record automation at the same time as I'm recording audio. So quite often I'll have my S1, which is behind me here, set up as well so that I can mute and fade elements in real time. And that gets captured as automation while I'm doing this bounce. Right, let's go. Uh, let's get set up. I'm going to start back on sequence one. I go to a kit that I can actually play. And I'm going to set up my chaos pad effects on here. Now there's quite a lot of latency between what I'm doing and what I'm hearing through Zoom. So this could be uh, awful, but let's see what we get. Right, I'm going to hit F12. I'm going to get a count in.
Something like that. Okay, there you go. I got a bit carried away there. I thought I was going to do about one minute, but we've got about a minute and a half. All right, let's just tuck this away for, for a moment. Okay, so uh, this is what I've captured. So you can see uh, if I bring everything out of record, I can actually play back what we got. And you can see reasonably straightforward where I've changed and gone between my different uh, sequence snapshots and what I probably would do is just very quickly cut that up a little bit uh, just by clicking in the time ruler and on bars mode. And I can also see pretty clearly where there's nothing happening on tracks. So at this point, I would normally just tidy up a little bit. Boom. There you go. And there you go. So with that's Obviously, we'd want something a bit longer, but we've got the beginnings of a track arrangement. There we go. So what I could do now is I could start building an arrangement. I could do some overdubs with more stuff from the MPC beats. But um, I am going to swiftly move on and switch to showing you some stuff in Reason now that we've got some stuff in Pro Tools. So uh, Reason, yeah, again, probably doesn't need much introduction. Uh, it's been around for a really long time. It was the original kind of virtual studio rack. Um, for a long time, Reason on a laptop was my complete setup. Um, I've used it with Pro Tools uh, for a long time using Rewire, where you sync up Reason as a standalone app for Pro Tools. But then since um, version 11, uh, Reason Studios produced reason as a plugin so I can open the rack inside Pro Tools and that really opens up what we can do. So let's, I want to show you a few different things, but I'm just going to start by opening reason into an instrument track. There's two different versions. There's the rack plugin and the rack effects plugin. Rack plugin is great for instruments and the effects plugin is if I want to just process an existing track. <clears throat> so there's reason the plugin inside Pro Tools. So as you can see, it is a virtual rack, which I can add modules to. And there's a few suggested starting points here, but this is by no means everything. Uh, if I open the browser, you can see all of the instruments and effects that I can actually use inside the rack and I can combine them. Um, just to give you a quick example, there's MPC style drum machines. There is Roland style drum machines, which with a step sequencer. Yeah, like that. that way of working. Again, obviously it's synced to Pro Tools. Um, there is a little icon here actually, which is worth focusing on. So similar to what I was doing in the MPC, I, if there's anything with a sequencer in it, in the rack, I can drag that as MIDI directly straight out into Pro Tools. Um, so there's that, there's loop players, there's synths, analog synths, wavetable synths, all kinds of stuff. Um, as well as extras. Um, so th these are all the built-in things. If you have Reason Plus, which is the kind of subscription service, then you get all the extras as well. And then there's add-ons from third parties. But the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm actually just gonna drag in the Europa synth. This is a wavetable synth, one of the newer instruments in Reason. <laughs> And I just want to show you how you can use any of the instruments in Reason just like a plugin in Pro Tools without, um, you know, actually, actually having to do anything or set anything up in the rack. That will just work straight away. And I'm going to use this to make a bass sound. 
So let's open up the browser and go into the base patches. We've got that going on. That's nice. I'm actually going to use this backtalk bass, which is one of my favorites. Um, digital bass that uses an 8-bit game waveform. All right. And so just like any other time in Pro Tools, let's just find some kind of an in point. Um, let's make a pre-roll and record on that track. This is all kind of based around A, this track. That's about all I've got to go on. Uh, actually, what I'm going to do is have a click. Uh, do that. Go two bars, click. Okay, so yeah, a bit of struggling with the latency a little bit here, but uh, not too bad. Um, I'm hearing it through Zoom. So I can quickly tidy that up. Let's just um, have a quick look at that in the MIDI. I did an extra bum note there, which I can fix. Uh, everything else looks pretty much in time. It's probably fine. <laughs> Okay, so I can very quickly fix up that. And that's that's basically how you'd work with any virtual instrument in, in Pro Tools, but doing it in Reason. Um, we can turn this down a little bit. Yeah. Okay, so let's look at something else. Um, let's make another track. Get rid of my click. So this time um, I'm going to open up the mono bass. This is one of the newer uh, things in Reason as well. It's actually in the Reason app. So you can, if you use this uh, particular plugin, you can use it on mobile as well. Okay, and again, I could play that straight away. It's going to make sound. But let's, instead of playing it by hand, I'm going to use a sequencer. And there's a couple of ways I can do that in Reason. We've got players, which are things like arpeggiators and note sequences and chord generators, which you can attach to any instrument. Or you can do what I'm going to do, which is go old school and use like an analog style sequencer. So let's have a go. Um, solo this. Let's move it all up. Again, different kind of workflow. If you'd like working with step sequences, it's right there in Pro Tools. And any of these sequences, I could also root out of the plugin and into another track and use this sequencer to sequence a different virtual instrument, um, which is handy. Okay, let's try something else. It's, I just want to show you lots of different things. Um, another reason. Okay, another empty rack. Uh, this time I want to show you one of the Reason Plus instruments that's just been added. This is the Algorithm 
FM sequen uh, synthesizer. Super easy to use. FM synth. Um, now I want a, a kind of a higher pad type sound to come in, um, something a bit ethereal. And I'm going to start with something from here. Um, this one's nice. But it's a little bit much, so I'm actually going to go with this one. Just as a starting point. So let's uh, just record something and see what we get. Would help if I could hear the click. Do that again. I had in mind, but it'll do. For our purposes, again, if I want to tidy up, I can just double click it, drop into the MIDI editor. Um, but I'm going to leave that alone. Okay, so the problem with this sound is that it's a little bit too nice. So I want to show you how you can start combining devices inside the Reason Rack to create new patches. Um, so let's look at my effects that I've got in here. Now I want to grunge this up and kind of bit crunch it. And I'm going to use the scream effect solo. This might be quite loud to start with. we go so that's that now we'll also add some reverb so let's go back to my effects it's a very nice reverb in reason let's just choose something random there we go it's totally random here okay so that's how i've set these up. Now notice that as I add these things, they're just kind of automatic routing like inserts of effects. Now the real killer thing in Reason is that I can adjust that. So I can actually turn around the gear rack and cable things manually here. So I could, for example, uh, I could change the cabling inside the rack. I can also change how it comes out to Pro Tools. So we've got this IO device, which everything is currently coming out of stereo into Pro Tools, but Again, like MPC, I've got these 32 outputs. If I recable things to here, I can pick them up on other tracks in Pro Tools. Um, so I could use that with the drum machines, for example, to kind of root all the sounds out individually um, and capture and mix them in Pro Tools. Um, okay. Let's see what else we can do. Oh yeah, so it's not just audio, it's also CV, modulation connections. So it's kind of, you know, same idea as a classic modular synthesizer in that I can actually take any parameters that are modulatable and connect them together. So I'd like to modulate this parameter, but the screen unit doesn't offer that built in. But if I turn the rack around, I can see that there is a modulation input for the parameter two control. And that could be modulated from anything else in the rack. Uh, I could create an LFO device and, and do that, or as it happens, the algorithm synthesizer has got some CV outputs, so let's use one of those. Uh, so I'm going to connect that. If I flip around, now I can actually use the, yeah, I can use the matrix here to route LFO1 to CV output 1. I'm going to turn that speed down. There we go. There we go. So I'm just trying to grunge everything up, go for a sort of dark garagey type sound. 
Right, I think I've got time for one more thing to show you, which is how I can use some of these ideas to affect the things I've already got in, um, inside the session. So I want to grunge up the drums. Let's solo up the drums. So I'm going to add reason as an effect on the drum track. So now this drum track is automatically rooting through the reason rack. And if I do something like add the pulverizer effect, it will immediately start working. So let's turn this down. Yeah. I can fill to that, grind it up. Another one I really like is the transformer. This is like a convolution effect. I can do kinds of weird stuff with. But I'm going to use it to add a vinyl sound, which just really just crunches it up and adds some crackle. And I can tame that a little bit using the um, bus compressor. So if I bypass my rack now, that was the original sound coming from the NPC. And that's what we got now. And likewise, I can do more stuff with these. This is the last thing I want to show you, but it's just too good to skip. I'm going to add the echo. Like This is a really nice take delay. That's in reason is standard. I think we've run out of song. We did. I'm going to go for this dreamy voice setting, which is like a real Boards of Canada style effect. Go. And that leaves us with something like this. Okay, so you can probably see tons of fun. Um, I'm going to have to stop there or else I could just keep going. So let me stop my screen share for a moment so that I can see you all and I can see Greg. Um, and I have just kind of been having fun here. So I have no idea if we've got any questions or other stuff going on. We, uh, we didn't hear any of that, Simon. No, that was, oh, that, okay. was, that was immense. No, that was massive. Thank you so much, Simon. That was, that was absolutely incredible. So we've been answering some questions that have been coming through. So thank you all for that. Keep, keep them coming because now Simon is uh, full, full attention is, is, is here. Um, and I'll kind of kick things off. Uh, you know, I, thank you again, Simon, for showing us that. I mean, I think the ability to, you know, obviously Pro Tools is a great platform. Everyone knows it's kind of the industry standard. We hear that all the time. Uh, folks are really used to, you know, doing a lot of recording and mixing, editing in Pro Tools. When it comes to music creation, obviously, I think that's that's one of the things where folks start thinking, oh, well, maybe I'll create stuff over here and then bring it in here, which, of course, that's perfectly, perfectly le le legitimate. But I think one of the things you've just kind of shown uh, is that you can actually feel very comfortable, even if you're not uh, using some of the stuff, you know, that, that's baked into Pro Tools, which is some great stuff. Um, you've shown us some of that. But if you're comfortable with some of these other tools, such as, uh, Reason or Reason Plus and uh, MPC Beats, you can actually really, you know, really beautifully integrate that stuff and continue with your 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 normal way of music creation and still leverage everything that Pro Tools has to offer. So, um, you know, I, thank you for showing that. Um, I did have a, a one question I wanted to ask that, that was coming, came in a couple times uh, in a couple different ways around the MPC Beats. So first of all, uh, yeah. MPC Beats is absolutely free, correct? I mean, that is something you can go and download right now. Obviously, you're not getting the hardware with it. <laughs> Uh, right. None of the, you know, there, there are different iterations of, of uh, the MPC hardware that, that exists today, but MPC Beats itself as a plugin is absolutely free, right? 
it, absolutely free. Yeah, yeah, and it it it's really powerful. It actually you know has all the features of MPC in it. It's it's limited to eight part you know eight tracks, eight programs. I was only using six uh, you know today, um, and yeah, it actually has quite an extensive MIDI mapping feature as well. So even if you're not using the Akai hardware, you can sort of recreate a lot of that hands-on focus. Um, obviously, when you do add the Akai hardware, it kind of does that seamlessly, but you know, they're not holding you back through the plugin at all. Great. So, and I, apologies for the my lawn services here. Welcome to the world of okay. uh, remote home, working at home. Um, the funny thing is, it's actually, I got really distracted because it started snowing really hard here. So Florida versus the middle of England is... I, I wish it were snowing here. Today. <laughs> <laughs> I wish it were snowing here. So a couple of the questions around MPC. So the one of the other questions that came in um, is around the MPC, that, you know, that famous MPC swing right that the, the yeah. swing quantized feel so obviously we have we do have that built into pro tools we have uh, via real-time properties we have a, a lot of those different different variations on the percentage of the npc swing uh but someone was asking uh on one of the social platforms um is it's it's is it's if it's the same as the classic npcs my answer to them was going to be and you might be able to either you know correct me or or or, or add to it is all the MPC swing is really based off of the original MPC 60, MPC 1000, uh, and different variants over time that they've made uh, to the MPC 1000, 2000, et cetera. But it's really all really based on what the, what the original MPC swing was. So, uh, you know, would I be correct in saying that? They're, they're just really different, you know, smaller variations as time has gone on or anything I should know specifically or they should know specifically <laughs> about that. So, I mean, I don't know how much the MPC swing itself has changed over the years. Um, what I do know is, you know, obviously we, the MPCs that we have now have that swing in there, or time correction as they call it. Um, and we have that in Pro Tools in, you know, like, as you say, you can do a real time MPC swing. And, and my understanding of those swing settings in Pro Tools is that we did sample, you know, we basically sampled them from the original MPCs, you know, Pro Tools has this amazing beat detective feature where we can analyze uh, loops and beats and then create uh, groove quantizes, you know, templates from them. Uh, and that's basically exactly what we've done with, with all the various classic swing settings that we have in Pro Tools. Yeah, yeah, thanks for that. So yeah, it really, and really over time, it's just been small variations. Akai have made small variations. Uh, over time, but basically, it really is that you know whether, whether you're working in in uh, MPC beats using the real time you know properties, the, the stuff we have there, it's it's all really it, it's that classic MPC swing. Um, so one more on so far on on, uh, on MPC uh, specifically, and then we'll move over to some of the questions around uh, Reason Plus uh, and Reason Rack. So um, where did it go? Um, oh, asking, someone was asking if uh, MPC software is similar to the IMPC, which was the, uh, the iOS version uh, of, of, of MPC. I think the answer is kind of some similarities, but really it's <clears throat> only these, right? Yeah, they are, they're quite different. Yeah, the IMPC is its own thing. You know, obviously it follows the same kind of project structure as MPC and you can export projects between the two, but they're they're pretty different. Uh, and the plugin version of MPC is MPC. You know, that is what is running, you know, the, my hardware MPC is running that software internally. And so the plugin is the same code. Um, yeah, it's the same with, it's the similar to with Machina and the iMachina, you know, they are kind of separate projects. Sure, yeah, yeah. So meant, meant to have some level of similarity, at least familiarity, but really it's an entirely, you know, it, its own thing, its own, it, you know, it, it, a different beast. So I hope yeah. that answered that question for that for that uh, that that person who was asking that on one of our platforms. So um, here in um, we'll we'll jump over to some reason questions here in our uh, registered Zoom. Uh, Peter Peter, uh, forgive me if I say your last name uh, incorrectly. Braid Bride, uh, how do you delete an instrument in Reason Rack? That's a pretty simple one. Uh, Simon, you want to answer that one? Yeah. Uh, yep. Delete key. We'll do it for you. So actually the. Both of these plugins quite intelligently, you know, will use the keyboard when the when they're focused. So yeah, if you if you select an instrument in the reason rack and hit delete, it will delete it. Um, simple as that. Or or you can right click. So there's, there's a couple of different ways of doing it. 
Beautiful. Thanks, Simon. Uh, someone was asking on, I uh, don't know if this was Twitter or Facebook, I can't really tell. Uh, how many reason racks can you load into one Pro Tools session? So I think, you know, originally pretty much for any plugin, the first the, the, the answer is normally going to be, well, it really depends on your system, how much RAM you've got, you know, what your system is capable of. But, um, you know, and again, I'll turn it over to you, Simon, but I'll basically say that, you know, I, I, I use Reason Plus, Reason Rack pretty, pretty extensively in, in, in Pro Tools. I've been using it in the last couple of records I've done, and I've been able to instantiate quite a good number. However, I would say that you actually typically don't don't need to instantiate that many because there's so much you can do and map out uh, directly from Reason into Pro Tools without having to instantiate a bunch of them. So, you know, my recommendation would be, you know, really work with uh, start with one and do as much as you can there and and, and get it out into the uh, into the Pro Tools mixer. Uh, but you know, I'll turn it over to the to the master to you, Simon. Yeah, no, I think you've, you've covered it pretty much. It is, it's interesting, actually, difference with MPC. So MPC, the plugin is designed to be, do you have one instance of it in your project and split it out, where the reason rack is designed to be used as many times as you want. So you can have one and split out an instrument. Um, uh, you, the, there's, there's a single MIDI input to each reason rack um, plugin. So you would normally have a separate plugin for each instrument that you want to play. Um, but then, uh, yeah, there's, there's, like you said, there's no real limit to how many. And Reason is kind of very well known for being efficient, especially, you know, if you use, use some of the earlier instruments that are in there. You know, if I think of the machine that I used to run Reason on, <laughs> I could barely run Word, let alone <laughs> Reason. <laughs> Uh, great. That's awesome, Simon. Thank you. So we've got another one here, um, here in the room uh, in Zoom uh, from uh, Mauricio Duarte, who wants to know, can you MIDI out from a reason rack to another MIDI in reason rack? So MIDI out from one reason rack instantiation into a MIDI in to another reason rack that's instantiated, I guess, on a separate, uh, separate instrument track, I'm assuming is what he's asking. Uh, yes. If yeah, via via Pro Tools track routing, you can do that. Yeah, so basically the MIDI sources in the Reason Rack will appear as track input, you know, instrument track input sources in Pro Tools. So if you routed that to another track with a Reason Rack on it, then you would get it through that way. Uh, but you you can't do it kind of directly. There's no you can't directly talk to each other. It has to go via Pro Tools. Uh, and that's there's that you know that's a that's a plugin thing. For all of the plugins that work like this yeah, across all DAWs that I know, yeah. Awesome, thank yeah. you. So, a um, couple other things coming in uh, regarding CV, Simon. Uh, you know, do you, do you typically tend to you, you showed a little bit of like that CV workflow um, assigning an LFO? Do you, do you use a lot of uh, you know the CV functionality uh, in your in your own workflow? And do you find that it's 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 efficient? You, you know, do you, how do you like it? How do you... Yeah, I, I love. I just like. I like tinkering with it. Um, you know, it's just brilliant fun to do that, um, to hook the things together and to see what happens. Um, the one of the more recent instruments in Reason, which is called Complex One, they actually kind of, for the first time, they had patching on the front panel. So then you've there you've got a kind of a semi modular synth that you can patch on the front, and that's quite fun to just have everything in one place. But you know, it's just fun to cable things together and see what happens. Yeah, sure. Uh, that makes that is, that is that is the fun of it. Um, so we've got a question here from from that came from YouTube, and I'm not exactly sure. So what's the difference between MPC Beats and 2.0? I'm not exactly sure what 2.0 they're referring to. Maybe you know what that is. I, maybe they mean. I, I'm guessing maybe they mean that just a normal version of MPC. Okay. Which is currently on 2.9, I think. Um, so they're kind of edging closer to version three of MPC. Um, but yeah, so basically MPC Beats is essentially identical to the current version of regular MPC that you would get with a hardware MPC. Um, so yeah, there's the only uh, limitation on it is yeah, eight, uh, eight tracks to eight parts essentially that you can work with at a time. Um, but yeah, otherwise, if you know how to use MPC, you, you'll be able to use this. And if you've got an MPC, it will control it. 
Beautiful. So we've got, so yeah, MP, yeah, they were asking about MPC 2.9. So yeah, you've just, you just asked that. Thank you for that clarification all. So we've got, we've got a couple more minutes uh, here left. So I think we can take a couple, couple more questions. And I think I see them, I see them kind of coming through. Um, you know, I'll, I'll kind of go back to, uh, to, to you, Simon, you know, a couple months ago, you did, you did a session kind of starting a, you know, how to start kind of setting up Pro Tools and, and creating a song. You know, what, what are one or two tips that you could give someone who's just starting off? Maybe, you know, you've got someone who is familiar with NPC or they're from, very familiar with Reason and that's kind of been their workflow for a long time. And they're maybe they're interested in getting, and you've kind of shown, you know, really jumping in and music creating and Pro Tools. But what are some things that you might recommend for someone who's kind of getting started in Pro Tools? You know, they're going to maybe use NPC Beats or Reason, uh, Reason Plus. Uh, in Pro Tools, but kind of getting them over the hump of kind of getting started and getting set up. What are what are some things you might recommend there uh, to help them get started uh, when they um, open up Pro yeah. Tools? Yeah, well, that's a good question. I think first thing is I wouldn't worry too much about trying to recreate what you do now in Pro Tools. You know, Pro Tools is kind of a brilliant at being an, a blank sheet of paper. You know, so you it will let you do what you do best in your current stuff um, and give you a place to capture it and and mix it. Um, if you want to, you know, get into actually, you know, using the MIDI features inside Pro Tools, then yeah, it's definitely worth just looking at a couple of the basic settings in Pro Tools. Things like the, how the transport works. You know, we have this thing called dynamic transport, which makes Pro Tools uh, navigation a little bit more like a traditional MIDI sequencer. Um, that's really key. Uh, what else would you say? um yeah i guess watch watch the watch the videos that me and gore have did <laughs> i'm getting yeah, sure pro tools tech tips that's a great place to to, to go yeah, your, yeah your videos gore has videos for sure um no that's that that's a good start and i think that that's uh that's good essential information for for anyone kind of getting started so yeah thank you simon so we've got a couple more uh and then we're uh we're just about almost out of time but i think we can get a couple more quickly in there so um one of the questions that came in uh is uh can the beats can the beats or the project and mpc beats be transferred between different plugin formats thank you long guy so i'm assuming what they're asking um is if you're on the AAX version of MPC Beats, if you can save a project and take that project and open it up in you know the you know, AU or VST version. Yep. And the answer is yes. Yeah, <laughs> right? definitely. Yeah. yeah. In fact, what I've been doing today was I was op I opened the project from my MPC directly, you know, and if I saved that from my project in Pro Tools, I would be able to open that again on the MPC or any other um, plugin platform. Yeah, Perfect. They've really, they have really nailed that workflow. Uh, in terms of you know letting you share what you've done and just kind of move around. Sure, yeah, that's an important one. So someone else was also asking if there's an Artaz version of MPC Beats, which there's not, uh, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, MPC Beats was created. All, we 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 were already in AAX land, you know, uh, when MPC Beats came out. Artaz is no longer uh, a plugin format that we use in Pro Tools, so we've moved on to AAX. So therefore, there there is not an Artaz version of uh, of MPC Beats. So. Um, and last question, uh, this one came from Aubrey uh, on YouTube. Hello, Aubrey. Um, any Pro Tools Melodyne and MPC workflows? So the one that comes to mind right now is is um, uh, Audio to MIDI, um, which is, uh, you know, that, I'm sure that that, that, that works. That's, you know, anything that comes to mind for you, Simon and Long Guy? Uh, I guess not, not direct, not directly, like you say. Um, they're both kind of, you can use, if you, capture stuff like we've been doing today then you can use all that melodyne stuff on it um, yeah more yeah. more to come there you know uh on on the pro tool side and i think that we'll we'll open that up and make that uh even even uh you know expand that in in, in greater detail so uh continue watching this space is i guess is, is, is what i'll say so i think we're just about out of time just i wanted to uh simon any 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 parting words from you for the uh for the uh, audience or we yeah, I would up. just say definitely go and download MPC Beats, go and sign up for the uh, 90 days of Reason Plus and uh, yeah, take awesome. full advantage of the uh, generous offers that we Absolutely. Yes. Simon, again, thank you so very much. That was absolutely incredible. Uh, as you've mentioned, uh, actually, if you've registered for uh, the, the uh, you know, today's session for the audio community plugin, 
you know, one of the great benefits of, of, of registering, I mean, obviously, it, you know, regardless, of you, we, we stream it live, everyone has access. But, you know, if you've regis- registered, uh, you know, for those registrants, you've already gotten an email from, from Reason. We, we, you know, you've got a 90 day, uh, you've got three months free of uh, Reason Plus that uh, the folks at Reason Studios have been so generous to, uh, to offer. So thank, thanks to, to Reason for that. Um, so you, you'll get a reminder email with the details. So make sure you go check that out. And as, um, as Simon mentioned, if you're, if you're you know, not if, when you're loving it, you know, if you want to continue your subscription, you've got your first three months free. So again, thank you to Reason. I want to thank uh, you know, the folks at Reason Studios and Akai. Uh, thanks to all of you, wherever you might be. And again, Simon, thanks to you. Uh, make sure... Yeah, we've got some other ones coming up. You can always sign up. We'll, we'll, we'll get the word out. You know, do register. If you want to go back and watch this one, this one will be available in a few days or any of the other ones that uh, any of the other audio community plugins that we've hosted over the last year uh, or so, you can actually find them. Uh, the, uh, the, there's a link here, avidblogs.com slash audio dash community dash plugin. So you can go back and, and revisit any of the, uh, the, the previous plugins that we've hosted. Uh, again, thank you to everyone. Simon, thank you. Wherever you might be in the world, please, everyone stay safe. Uh, we will be back in a couple of weeks with a new one. And uh, until then, wish everyone safety, be well, and we'll see you next time. Thanks, everybody. Cheers. Thanks. Thanks, Bye-bye. Greg.